Hello and welcome back to New Most PC Builds. Today I'm going to do another cooler video. So I'm going to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So let's have a look at which cooler I'm going to add. Today I'm going to add the MSI Core Frozer S. Those of you that watch Gamers Nexus might be familiar with the cooler because I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure it's identical cooler that they use in their standard build, but it looks very, very similar, if not the same as the cooler that they use in uh, their standard build for testing cases. So when I saw this available on Amazon after seeing it in the Gamers Nexus videos, I thought, hey, I want to look at that cooler and add it to the league and see how it does, because if Gamers Nexus use it, can't be too bad, can it? Because they're ultra, ultra on airflow, cooling, etc. So... Without further ado, let's have a look at the install, and then once we've gone through the install, we'll have a look at the scores. So install-wise, the best piece of advice I can give you is to make sure you follow the instructions. They're not the clearest, but if you... What I did is I laid all the components out in front of me, and then once I did that, I went through everything and got a hold of how you're supposed to do it. So the first thing to, I would I point out is when you get it out of the box, there's a little plastic ring that's not for socket 1200 or 115 whatever um, it needs to come off then this little film becomes loose at that stage but you'll need to include that now like you do with other um, Intel coolers you have to put a spike through which will come through the holes on the board so you on other ones there's little lines that tell you which socket to line up with unfortunately with this one there isn't so what you have to do is you have to place it through make sure that the back is flat and for socket 1200 etc it needs to be pushed as far to the end as you can then there's little tiny plastic washers which you then have to screw onto each of the little the, the screws that are pointing through so they until it actually gets a good grip and it doesn't stay in place, but it's going to stop the screw from falling down, etc. And you repeat that for four, four times. Once you're done, you should have four of the little screws poking up. Next thing you have to do is put this underneath the motherboard with the screws poking through the four holes on the board. Once you've got them through, you have to take these bolts and screw them down. Make sure the plastic washer that's on the bottom of them is pointing towards the motherboard because then it cushions the grip on the motherboard and don't, doesn't put a uh, metal bolt straight onto the uh, motherboard. Now one thing I would say about the process I just had to do is as you put in the, um, the bolts through I found that um, they would move around a lot when trying to line them up with the holes so it wasn't the easiest thing to do. But there you go. The back plate is now attached to the motherboard. Next, we have to put this top plate on top. Like so. And then you have to screw it down. So I'm gonna put the screws in, but I'm not gonna put them tight. So now I've not tightened the screws all the way, but it's the paint plate is on, now it's on. I'm gonna tighten it up all the way. At this stage, I'm gonna to check to make sure that the cooler won't hit any VRMs cooling or anything. Looks like we're good. Time now for some thermal compound. As always, I'm going for a rough P, a P shape method. Okay, when you're going to put the cooler on, there's a bar that you're going to screw in, and there's holes on top of the plate that the cooling plate that touches the CPU, and you'll notice that the fan's in the way, so I am going to have to take the fan off. The uh, retention brackets for the fans do not come off very easy. I'm having to use a screwdriver to try and lever them out so not ideal and it's doing damage there's also plastic on top of the um, a film on top of the uh, cooler so don't forget to pull that take that off or that might 
have an adverse effect on cooling. So you'll notice that there's uh, rubber pads here and here. That's where the cooler will have to go on that side because obviously they rest against that and prevents damage to the, uh, the fins. Even though those retention clips are so hard, they've already damaged the fins on this side anyway. But here we go. So now, as you can see, I can put the uh, wee bracket on and it will sit, once it lines up, it will sink to the holes. Okay, there you go. So it doesn't stay there, but it all that sinks. Uh, it'll be sinking to the holes. And you need that because then once you put it on, you need to make sure that it lines up to the scoop, two screw holes that are on the um, the bracket that you put on before. This is where a magnetic screwdriver comes in real handy. So I've got one screw in. Now I've got two screws in. Again, not doing too much on either side. Just trying to make sure that you get good even pressure. Captive screws would have been, or spring mounted screws, I think would have been better. So you, you know you can't put on too much pressure. Feels like it's on pretty well. Not trying to tighten them too tight, but I also want to make sure it's going to keep good contact. And there we are. All I've got to do now is see if I can get this fan back on. connect up the fan. It's a four pin PWM fan so it should work really well with the BIOS and we're powered up which is good so the cooler is now on. The test bed is ready to test so I'm now going to get to testing the cooler, running it through its paces and see what scores it gets. So install wise a couple of points that I picked up on. Um, first of all um, when trying to put the back plate through the motherboard because the little screws that poke through aren't still it's a bit of a pain. You have to try and maneuver it around because as you're trying to put it through, screws can move, which makes life a little bit difficult. So if I was MSI, I'd look at, let's say, like the Vitru cooler, that the uh, screws click and stay stable because that was much easier to put through. If they added that, I think it'd be much, 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 much better. Secondly, I didn't like the uh, fan clips that went onto the cooler. Even before I'd um, looked to take the fan off, they'd already damaged the fins of the cooler. So not a big fan of that. I know it's like the standard little wiry frame thing, but um, the others seem to be better and don't seem quite as bad as, or they were they're almost too tough. What I did like was the little pads that they had where the fan got mounted, that was excellent because it meant that the, the, the fan didn't make any noise by rubbing up against the cooling fan fins, which was really, really good. Also, thirdly, putting the bar across the top at the end when you're trying to attach the cooler, it, it kind of sits with two little nodules that go into holes, which are supposed to keep it still and in line. It never did that. And trying to get the screws through and into the holes, it was a right royal pain. And those screws, if they'd have been spring mounted, it would have been much better. It was... You had to be really careful that you weren't putting too much pressure on it. If they'd have put spring mounted so you, so you couldn't go too far, I think that would have been much better. Especially for somebody that's not familiar with it, they could have tightened too, too far, damaged something or anything else. So if they'd have put spring loaded screws on that, I think it would have been much better. But on the whole, I didn't think the uh, install was that bad. The instruction, the instructions are a little bit unclear. And what would have helped with that is if, like on some coolers, they put the Intel parts that are specific in one bag and the AMD parts that are specific in another bag. They were all just thrown in, so it wasn't immediately clear which washers and which screws I was going to use. It only became clear as I started doing the install. So that would have made life for, say, somebody that wasn't familiar with installing a cooler a lot easier. So with that said, uh, let's have a look at the scores now and see how it did and how it compared to the other coolers. So let's have a look at the scores and how the MSI cooler did. 
Firstly, we're looking at base temperatures. As you can see, the base temperature is 35 Celsius, which is a little bit on the higher side, and it's the second to last worst performer. But you'll see now why it did that. Because it was equally one of the best for bass sound. Basically, looking at the fan, I just don't think it was spinning that much. And I don't think that's anything to do with I think, fan profile or anything else. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not, um, because I don't change the fan profile when installing a new cooler. All of the coolers run using the same fan profile. So I'm guessing that the actual fan itself spins at a lower RPM, which is why you get the slightly worse base temperature, which you know isn't bad by any way, stretch of the imagination. It's not like it's overheating or anything. It's just a little bit higher. But the bass sound is really, really low. So for me, that's the, the trade-off worth having. So the average Cinebench score over the runs was 47.95, which, as you can see, puts it only really behind the Vitro V5 in terms of the score, which was a really good result. Not surprising, really, um, because, you know, as we'll see when we get to the max temperatures, um, the max temp that we got wasn't there for long. It basically only base hit it, so the cooler was actually doing a pretty good job. It just peaked a little bit higher. So with that, let's have a look at those max temps. The max temps over the runs was 73.7 Celsius. That puts it kind of in between what we've seen of the two groups of coolers I've had so far, which is we've had the really good group, which is your, your 212s, your, your, your Noctua cooler and your Dark Rock 4, etc, etc. And the likes of your Dragon Reaver. So it's kind of in between those, which, again, as we saw with the base temperatures, um, base, it, it was not spinning that high, so therefore noise came into play. So as you'll see now with this, the, the temperature isn't high, but it could have been better, but... I think a little bit has been sacrificed for sound, as we'll see now. The max sound was 41.2 decibels, which is actually pretty decent. It's only beaten by three coolers. So again, the offset of a slightly higher temperature and low and volume, uh, lower volume of noise has been made here. So for me, it's, it's a trade-off worth it, because again, at 73.7 Celsius, it's not going that high. It's not thermal throttling. It's not going to cause any damage. It's not that high at all. So for the slightly lower sound, it's a trade-off worth making. Scoring ranges have kept the same. I'm, I'm, at this, I'm happy at this point that we're seeing a good differentiation between the coolers with these scores. So without further ado, let's see how the MSI cooler did. All right, so as you can see, that it's, it's coming fifth in the table. It was joint fourth with the Vitro V5, but because of a slightly worse thermal performance, it's gone down to fifth, because that's the tiebreaker. Um, so very pleased with the cooler. You can, as you can see, the bass sound is fantastic. The average max sound is fantastic. And it, the average score was really good as well. The max, average max temp let it down a little bit, but you know we talked about the trade-off on that. Where I think they could have done better with this is the price. It's fifty dollars for this cooler. If it had been forty dollars, it would have been coming in with a score around thirty-one, thirty-two, which would have put it on par with the really good cool, uh, coolers out there. But as you can see from the score it's got, you can see why the likes of Gamers Nexus use it in their standard build because it's a pretty damn good cooler. And now I'll give you my final thoughts and conclusion. So as you saw from the scores, the, the cooler performed very, very, very well indeed. Um, as I mentioned at the scores at the end, the, the price lets it down a little bit, but as a cooler, it's fantastic. You'll also notice on the scores that it only got a, a two for install, which I'd already mentioned, but also it only got a two for the looks. It's an MSI cooler, so what have MSI done? It, they've thrown red at it because it's that's their brand, that's their colour. The only problem is, with unless you've got red in your build, it's not going to fit. So, and it's also grey as well, which again is very, very specific to a colour scheme. Also, there's no RGB fan. So you, if you wanted RGB, you'd have to swap the fan over. So the, the, for those things and the price, would I recommend buying this cooler? I think if the looks that it has appeal to you, then absolutely. You know, performance wise, it's great. But, you know, the, the looks put me off a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's a good cooler. And if you see this and you want to buy it, I would because it's not going to let you down. All right, I hope that information was useful and I hope you like uh, the video. If you do, please toss a like on. If you didn't, dislike, but also please leave a comment on how we can improve the videos and what else you'd like to see in terms of tests, etc., etc. And please don't forget to subscribe because subscribers are always welcome. And as always, take care.